suppose you guys want me to talk. <laughs> Can you? Barely. Uh, well, I said it on the radio, one of the biggest stats on the stat sheet tonight is Boat Ride had two assists. The first game he had 18 points and eight assists, which means we kept him out of the lane for a good portion of the game. Because what he does is when he gets points and assists, he gets points for guys for them who normally may struggle to score a little bit. Gets layups for their bigs. He gets wide open shots for their, a couple of their shooters who are not as good as creating off the dribble. And I think that's one of the biggest stats on the stat sheet. Um, gave up 17 offensive rebounds, which I wasn't very happy with, but they only scored second uh, nine second chance points on those. I'm going to have to look at that film, and uh, we certainly can't give up 17 to, to other teams and expect to win, but um, when you hold a team to 32% shooting, you got a pretty good chance to win. you got a pretty good chance to win. Um, obviously very proud of everybody that played tonight, of every guy that played, contributed. Team attitude was tremendous. Tay got one shot, but he could care less because we won the game. And, um, you know, obviously we got to get him some more touches, but... Overall, great crowd, tremendous crowd helped us. You know, the whiteout helped us, and, and, the, and the crowd helped us. And, uh, our guys were ready to play tonight. They followed the game plan to the T. Questions? You said the uh, you guys were ready to play. How much of that is because it's UConn and you know they're defending national uh, champs? I don't know that defending national champs have a whole lot to do with it. The fact they beat us up there had more to do with it than anything. And, um, you know, we're at home. You got, you got to hold, if, you, if you're going to be in a race for the league, you got to hold home court advantage. You got, you got to hold home service at home. You can't, can't lose. And uh, our guys know that. And they were, they were not happy about the loss up there, obviously, and the way we lost. And we felt like we, you know, did some things that made it easier for them to win. Um, so tonight they were they were ready for a little payback. How has this rivalry grown uh, over the years? You, you've been here since you guys were in the Big East with them. Well, over the years, I mean, it's, it's because they're a good team and we're a good team. Usually it's, you know, usually two teams are ranked coming into the game. Uh, we weren't tonight, but, um, you know, most most years you're ranked. And it's just, it's developed into a great rivalry. And, um, you know, one, it's good for our league. And, you know, excited about the fact that uh, that there are rivalries developing in the league, and, and that you know, that, and get those kind of crowds and that kind of atmosphere. It's, you know, that's what you play college basketball for as a player. It's, it's that opportunity to play, you know, in that kind of atmosphere. So, it, you know, it, it is developing to quite a rivalry. Troy and Gary both talked about not being pleased with how they played up there. For for two young guys, how big is it for them to step up? in the return game and, and play like they did? Well, I mean, it's a difference in the game, you know. I mean, Gary played scared to death up there. He, played, he, he hit the wall about that time as a freshman, and he looked like he was scared today. He was just, I don't know, I don't, I don't think Gary was scared, but he was just unaggressive. And tonight, he was aggressive tonight. He was aggressive. And, you know, we talked to him in the shoot around today. The last thing before he left, I, you know, we pulled him aside and said, hey, Gary, man, look, you're open. You, you know, like you get a little roll and you get to that open area, shoot it. Don't quit worrying about it. What should I do? And, you know, if you get an opening to attack a guy, go attack the guy, which he did tonight. And, you know, he didn't he didn't care if Brian was, you know, they put Brian on him to put size on him, but he didn't care. He just went right at him. And pretty successful. So, um, that was big. Obviously, Troy played tremendous, except for I'm going to choke him. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, but when you're young, you have to go through learning a lot of things. You know, and, and obviously the officials were calling the game tight, and um, you know he didn't. He, he, in those situations, you can't say a word, you can't display anything, and he did the wrong thing. And you know that that was uh, he know he knows the mistake he made. Troy knows the mistake he made at the end of the game, and I certainly don't think expect him to ever do it again. But obviously, he had a tremendous, tremendous game as a player. There's been talk about him stepping up and and growing into a leadership role. Was this guy tonight that was aggressive and attacking and, and always looking to make something happen? The guy that you know you've been trying to develop him into. Absolutely, you know somebody somebody's got to step up and take charge a little bit. And particularly when you're, it's it's best if your point guard can be. 
it's the natural guy. And like Boatwright is for them, and you look around the league, you know, usually the step up guys, either the one or two guard, most of the time, you know, it, it's a lot easier because they get the ball in their hands so much. And uh, again, very pleased with, with his aggression in the game and, and uh, you know, made smart plays for the most part. A couple turnovers that I, I'd like to. How big was Corey's play in, there in the first half with uh, Octavius Huge, Allen? huge. Huge. I mean, and he had to play on the defensive end, which is where he's, you know, Corey doesn't really struggle on offense most of the time. If we get him the ball, he's going to get fouled, get a bucket, you know, something good's going to happen. But he played much better defensively tonight than he had to. Tay, you know, couldn't play, couldn't put Tay back in. And uh, I, I just thought Corey, you know, he obviously had six points and all that, and everybody worries about those stats, but he was much better defensively. He made he made a couple mistakes. He listened in the huddle, corrected those, and then he was fine. But um, huge, huge minutes by him. You talked about earlier in the week how much they pack the lane, how tough they make it. Um, but you guys only took 11 three-pointers, so you, so you weren't settling. Uh, obviously, that had to be part of the plan, but you have to be pleased with how they executed that. Well, you know, I told them I was tired of hearing about how good UConn's defense is, and it is a good defense. I mean, they, they are good defensive. But, so, you know, sometimes you can give an opponent too much credit. And, you, you know, you get so worried about driving in there because it's going to be caught, whatever. I, again, tonight we threw it in there. We drove it in there. I, I'd have to go back and look at what our paint, what we call paint touches, but we had a lot of paint touches tonight. And, um, you know, you got to give your opponent respect, but not too much respect. And, again, tonight, we got enough done offensively, and a lot of we got we got a lot of offense generated off the of defense by getting steals and deflections, and getting layups, and you know those are hard. Can't guard those. <laughs> you talked to me also about the bottom guys in the zone being as active as the top guys. I mean, Gary gets four steals. Is that what you were talking about from Absolutely. him getting him active? Absolutely. I mean, you you got the bottom of your zone working as hard as those two guards are out there. Then you're going to get more deflections. Then it's tougher to run offense. Then they can't just run their plays. And we, we got that out of Gary and even Jermaine and Shaq tonight. You know, everybody who played that was much more active. And, um, you know, and what get, again, what gets lost in Tay's stats in his minutes, I mean, he made some tremendous rotations to take away shots. He anchored our defense from behind. And, um, you know, he had three blocks. I, I got to see the one. I, I guess it was goaltending, but I. I don't know. That was pretty close. I, I, I tell these officials sometimes before the game, now this guy, he, he's a freak. He can jump a little higher and he's a little longer than most people, you know. But, you know, um, uh, he, he he did a lot of things that aren't showing up in that stat sheet tonight in the back of the zone. All the back of the zone was, was more active tonight. Anything else for Coach? You guys are easy.